Hello, welcome back to another video of Just For Queer. I hope you're all doing well, all keeping safe, all out of trouble. Today is a very grey, wet, dull day. So, all good though. Still got my hands full with what I need to do. Um, fish are nice and active today. I've gave them their first feed. Well, it'll be, it'll be only their first feed for today, to be honest with you. I think the water temperatures, when I last went into the filter house, it was running at 12 or 13, I can't quite remember, but we'll go in there and we'll check it out once we're in there. Um, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to be installing a automatic top-up system for the pond. And what that's basically going to do, every time I do a water change, uh, every time the water the water level the water evaporates from the pond the system will automatically um, top it up for me so I won't be having to run up and down switching on the tap checking if the pond is um, completely full now to the levels that I want I'm going to set a float switch in there um, which is going to be connected to the automatic top up system and once like I said the water levels drop it's going to automatically just top it right back up for me and once it's the levels you just shut it right back off um, let me just take you guys around to the filter house and I can show you um, what it is just turn you guys around okay so this is the automatic top up system that I'm going to be installing I do apologize about the condition of the box I left it outside in the rain and it's all obviously gone all manky it is brand new kit and um, I'll just show you guys exactly what comes in here I've opened it up already just to make sure everything was in place and all you get you get two um, hose pipe connectors that will be connecting onto the actual kit itself you get your plug-in system so it can all be wired up with a plug on it as well so that's good stuff so that saved me a journey actually because I thought I was actually gonna run out and get it but you guys have got that in there as well this doesn't come with it this is one of my kits that I had in there and you get this here Proline automatic top-up system and the float switch is connected to it I'm not sure how long the wire is it looks pretty long could be five meters plus I'll let you guys know once I've literally took it all out and unwired it um, and also you get a little leaflet here which basically shows you simple instructions tap water comes in from there comes out from there and back into your pond and um, that's where the float switch shows you exactly the levels where, what you should have the float switch okay so simple stuff and what I'm going to be doing I'm going to install this on get the float switch into the pond connect my uh, tap water to this and then connect this side to my dechlorinator free stage via dechlorinator and then the, the free stage dechlorinator obviously is feeding in straight into the middle chamber of the nexus so i'm just going to be returning it back into the nexus so i'll just take you guys off the tripod and i'll show you what needs to be done inside the filter house before we start installing this so if you come in here sorry about my mess gonna have to tidy all this malarkey up now um, i'm hoping to put the top ups automatic top-up system somewhere around here and try and keep the via three stage dechlorinator over there might have to do a little bit of adjustments so but what I need to do remove all this box all that up put that away neatly um, remove this sh shelf here and start installing the top-up system so we can crack on straight away once we've um, once I've removed all this so I'll get all this done and then we can start videoing 
of installing um, the top up system. Okay, so I'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, as you see, I've removed the shelf, removed all the um, bits and bobs that were on the shelf, and just placed the Proline also top up system right above the the air uh, three stage dechlorinator. And the float switch is just sitting there, which I'm gonna run outside. Hopefully the cable is long enough to go out from there. I was gonna drill some holes to go run it run it through through the walls. Um, but what I'm gonna do, because I've got gap up there, instead of making any holes, make my life easier and more simple for me. I'm just gonna literally run it out from the top of the roof there, run it straight down and hopefully I'll have enough cable to get the, actually get the float switch into the pond. I'm gonna hold the wire up with all these stuff. Another job from Amazon. And they come with these sticky magic things. And you just stick these onto the, you stick these onto the wall. And obviously these onto the stickers. So they're like back to back stickies and it will keep everything nice and neat. So these are from Amazon cheap as nuts so I've got that there as well nice and level and straight which it should be because it's actually sitting right below the VR and the VR is um, spot on as well anyway so that should actually be straight so that's all nice and there and I've connected up the power box or the transformer box whatever it is right over here screwed it next to the electrics I've just had these electrics uh, there's double sockets installed um, about three four days ago so got six double sockets there running 12 plugs which are more than enough for me and I've got these nice little red lights underneath so you can see what's on what's not on so anyway so that's there so I'm gonna run the cable from the actual top up box, top up system, this cable here, unloosen it a little bit, run it all nice and neatly down here and just connect that up and plug it in. So that's simple stuff, got plenty of cable for that. I think the cable that's supplied with the float switch, it doesn't look any longer than two, three meters max. I haven't um, took it out yet so I'm not quite sure but there's plenty plenty cable with the actual power supply what um, cable yeah okay so you're all right with that and then there's plus there is um, plenty of cable from the actual adapter so you're more than enough it looks like all together around 10 meters so that's all more than enough so if this float switch what cable ain't long enough I did want it originally here I'm gonna run this outside quickly see if it is long enough the length is correct um, if not I'm gonna possibly have to pop it over there and then these adapters where I was just gonna this one here I just unplug and plug in so it's like kind of plug in play just take it off but it's not gonna happen right if I don't have enough cable going through, so I'm just gonna have to run a, the tube and connect it up like that. So let's just see how it's gonna go. I'm um, talking absolutely poop. So let me just run this float switch outside. Hopefully we've got enough and that can stay there. If not, uh, it's gonna have to move and we'll just take it from there. Okay, so I'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, as you can see, I've had to move the auto top up system over here and that's because the float switch wire which is this cable here running all the way down um, it's around two to three meters I think it's around three meters in length so I didn't have enough enough play to have it fitted how I wanted it above the dechlorinator which would have made gave me less pipe work to run it into the system but I've had to place it here, it's not a problem. 
I've already connected it up to the transformer, which is here, and just plug that right in there and screw the transformer there. And I've run the float switch wire now out and underneath the window. So I had a shelf over here but with all the water treatments. I've had to remove that as well so I can remove the window and make a slight little hole literally below the below the window and run the uh, um, had to take the window out because the float switch is around two inches in diameter so I had to take the window out drop it out the window and now it's in the pond so I'll show you guys once we get around to there but what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna connect all this up to the dechlorinator and what I've done I've took these connectors off which the which it came with and I've just wrapped around PTFE tape around both sides I'm not sure if it's picking up on the camera because the connection here is white and the tape is white so I'm not sure if it's all there but that's nicely done there and I've done that side already and I've just connected that one up and I'm also going to connect this piece over to there connect one of these pieces that it came with hose connectors onto this flexi hose I'm going to be using a flexi hose instead of um, a solid 15 mil pipe just so I can get all the way around there and swivel all the way around there and get the hose from the back of the dechlorinator into the um, and connect it all up so it's from this side that I have to have the water coming in so pretty awkward it would have been more ideal if while the water's coming in bush to go in from there and to come out from this way but the stage is to go through this side so no problem so i'm just going to use the flexi hose get the whole hose all nice and safely all connected up and my mains from the tap is coming from here which i've got a gardena tap controller so i'm just going to disconnect this possibly extend it with hard fit solid pipe which is 15 mils bring it on from the back of the bio chamber and connect it from this side and as you see it shows you on the um, system itself where the tap water goes in from and where the water returns back to the pond so I'll just get these fittings all connected up get the pipe running through all that nicely all connected up and then um, we can go outside and I'll show you how I've placed the float switch and then hopefully we just switch it on and we can get it all up and running okay so i'll catch you guys in a bit okay as you see all connected up nice and sweet it's actually looking better than i thought and i've just run the pipe down like that so i'll just run it through you the main water the main tap water is coming from over there and i've put a tap controller there and the mains is supplied from here this side of the connection coming through as you see it shows here as well where the tap side goes and flowing back to the pond and I've got a 15 mil hose pipe I've put these brackets on here to hold them I've got these from B&Q they were on a bargain to be honest with you a whole pack for just under seven quid and what I've had to do they come in doubles so I've just sawn them down and they've also got their bit they've got pre-drilled holes or they've got their holes there so you can screw them in so once i've cut them down i had to drill a hole one in there and one there and make double use of them and as i was saying i'm running run the 15 mil pipe all the way through all the way through and i've put another tap controller right over here so i can control the flow coming into the three stage dechlorinator so down there I've got it fully open so the flow is full taps full open running up into there and running into the auto top up system and then the pipe runs all the way down and I can control it here so I can trickle in the water so we'll just go outside now and I'll show you what I've done with the float switch and where it's going to be placed in the pond coming down to the corner of the pond. So I've just run the wire from here 
coming all the way down. I'm going to be putting those ceiling brackets in, which is going to be coming down and it's going to, all the wire is going to be in between the cladding nice and neatly tucked away. I've actually put one of those clips there just to hold it in place. And I've got the float switch sitting in here right now. And basically this is where it's going to go, right in the corner of the pond. And it needs to be at the level of where this white line is drawn. So once the level and the float switch, as you can see, it's in there and just like a normal float switch. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's right in the middle. And once that drops, the pond will automatically start topping up. So I'm just gonna leave this out for now so we can switch the system on and see if it's running through water. So we'll just go back around into the filter house switch it on make sure we've got water trickling in and then we can set the levels of the float switch into the pond and job will be done so this is plugged in over here let's just switch that on it's switched on and that's feeding through into the dechlorinators so let's just pump these in let the air out of them so they can fill up all the way. And the water's actually coming in from the return right now. You can see right here, I'm not sure if it's picking up on the camera. I'm trickling in into the water, into the main chamber of the Nexus. So simple stuff. So let's just now go outside. Place this float switch where it needs to go. And then the water is at the level that I like it to be at the minute. So I don't think it's gonna need any topping up. It should automatically shut off. So let's just drop the float switch and let me walk back around, get that all nice and sorted at the levels that I want. And then we can go back into the filter house and then hopefully it should all cut off, okay? Okay, I've placed the float switch into place. And as you can see in the camera, I've just zip wired it to that pipe coming out from the pond there. And I've set, set it exactly to the level that I want. And I've gone into the filter house and the water's already stopped. So it's definitely working, all connected up all nicely. So now, whenever I do a water, cha water change or a clean with a Nexus, the water should automatically top up. I'm actually gonna run a little quick little test, cleaning out the Nexus and checking out if it's all working nice and fine and take it from there. So what I'll quickly do, I'll clean the Nexus out, I won't make a video of it, and then hopefully the water will start trickling in again once the levels in the pond drop, okay? So I'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, this is the third rinse that I'm, sorry, second rinse that I've gave the Nexus and I'm now topping it back up. So it's the third fill, but it's had two rinses and the top up system automatically kicked in and started topping up the pond for me. So that is fantastic stuff for me. Now I don't need to run up and down the garden, um, checking the levels of the ponds, if I've topped up enough, if I've over flooded or not. I hope you get what I mean. So simple stuff, all nice and filling up the ponds back again. And once it hits the correct levels on the float switch outside, um, it will just shut off and keep doing the same thing. Water goes down, boom, fills it up. That's all that. That's all nicely done now. I'm just going to quickly clean up my mess. Just to show you guys quickly before I go, I've been cutting the pipe with a, a pipe cutter, and these are absolutely brilliant to have in hand instead of standing knifing. Um, the pipes, you get a nice straight 
cut so when you go to actually fit them into the connect connections they're much more nicely fitted in and snug and you won't be less chance of getting any kind of leaks coming out from them okay it cuts hose hose lock pipe hard pipe I'm not sure what size it goes up to the max but I've got this as well another Amazon Amazon job so this is great to have and also I was going to connect this as well to the end of the wire once it's returning back into the um, Nexus but I'm, I don't have these connections on me which I've ordered them as well another job from Amazon and once I receive them I'll do a small little update of just fitting this in and show, is explaining to you guys what it does basically just lets you know uh, the amount of flow coming into the pond sorry coming in from the, the chlorinators and it's run on battery it's got a mounting bracket at the back there so that will just get popped up somewhere there and that will be that and as you can see the pond temperature is 12.4 in the pond yes Simon I got that correct and the outside temperature is 14 so it's all looking good yesterday I think I was just above 14 so it's up and down up and down so I'll just fill the Nexus back up now so I can return it to the pond and I'll catch you guys in a bit okay then guys auto top up system all nice and sweet all installed all running well it's topping up the pond now as we speak as you can see the water levels over there have dropped so once we reach that white line on the float switch it's gonna shut out so all the fish are coming up they think they're gonna get fed again they won't be getting any more grub today Benny's looking beautiful on the koi water clarity has gone down a little bit because I don't have a roof over the pond it's been raining here and messing up the clarity of the pond also like I've mentioned before it's messing up my pH as well I mean two mines if I should put on a pergolo roof over the pond I'm not sure if I really want to cover up all this nice filter house work that I've just done but we'll just we'll, we'll have to see so just another little update as well just to let you guys know the goshki here that I purchased from Quinicoy for 495 which was measured in at 43 centimeters and once we measured it up it was just under 39 cm I rang up Mike she sent him the video on WhatsApp and within five minutes um, Mike refunded me back 50% of the cost that I bought the fish for the quay for so that was very very generous of him more much more than what I expected so that was absolutely a touching result so definitely can't complain about that um, thank you very much for them guys for giving out such a good service and a quick service so I much appreciate what they've done. So I just thought I'd update you guys just to let you know that if you do buy any koi from Quinny Koi and there, there is any problems with your stuff, they're really good. They've got a really good service, really quick service, and um, they'll definitely look after you. So I highly recommend them. I recommended them before anyway, but much more so now after the way I just got looked after. So there's no way I can complain about that absolutely 10 10 result so where's our karashigoi the new one that was causing me problems it's over here she's swimming nice and fine she's settled in now so she's actually coming up for food as well so that's all good stuff as well no you're not going to be getting fed so thank you very much again for watching another video of just for koi uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please remember to subscribe if you like the video you can give us a thumbs up if you don't like the video you can give us a thumbs down 
either thumb will collect them no problems if you remember to hit the notification button so you can get notified whenever i upload all my new videos that'd be great so all said and done that's about it thank you very much again all take care and all the best